Hello and welcome back to Disco Elysium. So, we have a couple of things to do. We have to go and check a bunch of traps all over the place. Hopefully my journal keeps a note of where we have to check the traps. Yeah. Okay, so it does. Um, so what we can do is we can just go have a look at all the traps and then head back here. Yeah, that should be good. So, Land's End is far northeast of the Feld building. Let's go to that one first. Because that should be past the church, and we need to go visit the church as well. Because we can get more perception, and that's going to be fantastic. So, let's head up this way. Hopefully we haven't missed anything between here and the church. Uh, so, Land's End is right up next to that radio tower. Uh, I might go to the church on the way back. Let's go all the way up here. It's a very long way. It's a very, very long way, apparently. I think this is where it is. Because this would be what I would describe as something called Land's End. It's also got some reeds next to it. No? This isn't Land's End? I'm just saying, if you were to have told me somewhere was Land's End, that would definitely have been it. Oh, it's over here. It's not quite, like, literally at the end of the land. It's, like, near it. There's a trap in the reeds at your feet. Looks like the same one you saw Morel set before. Same mesh. Same wiring. Let's, uh, look around. The reeds sway in the coastal breeze. They seem to be waiting for something. The wind picks up here, near the cape's end, surrounding the narrow strip of land from the three cardinal directions. It's cold for this time of year. Okay, let's reach for the trap. Locusts are crawling around in the trap, confused but uneaten. You see no carnivorous reed phasmid gorging on them. A big surprise. Lieutenant grins mirthlessly. Anyway, one down, three to go. Um, it'll be the next one, surely. Surely, he repeats and looks at the sea, then at you putting the trap back on the ground. Anyway, the air is nice and fresh here. Cool. Well, glad that that went well. Uh, so that one's just scored off the list. Yeah. Okay, so we don't have to come back later. Southeast of the village, I know where that one is, and then the boathouse. I think I also know where that one is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I got lost. Because I was paying attention to where I thought the boathouse was and not where I was going. I'll admit it's not a great excuse, but it's fine. We do have a level up, right? Oh, yeah. Well, in we go to the church. We also need to go speak to some other people today, so we should probably do that after the traps, because there are actually, like, you know, a lot of people we need to go and speak to. But, right, let's get our perception done here and then hopefully finish the Noid thing. Right, oh, I need to put on boots as well that give me perception. So, I already have those ones on. Do I have any others that give me perception? Uh, that one lowers my perception. Okay. I gotta say, not a great thing for glasses to lower your perception. That's uh, pretty much against their idea in general. Right. So I should have plus one perception. I have zero perception. So something else I have lowers my perception. The uh, hat. Okay. I'll put on the beanie again. That's fine. Right. So I want to go perception, which is right in front of me. Uh, it's the one I'm on. That's why I couldn't see it. And accept changes. Right. So now we should be able to do this. Yes. What is it? 72. That's pretty high. Let's go. No. Still nothing. Sooner isn't even looking at you this time. That's another failure. I'm gonna put back on the hat. That hurts. That that's that hurts quite badly. <laughs> Failing again. Okay, well, whatever. It's fine. Uh let's head further along this way. Um so where's the next one? So that was just a straight failure. We have the ice bear fridge as well, I need to go back to. 
Definitely. And we also have the... Oh, no. We have the expert fridge. That must be it. That's the only other one we have unlocked. Don't know why it wasn't... Oh, no. There we go. It's unmarked again. Yeah. So, expert fridge we need to go and do at some point. But... Oh. Forgot the whole reason I went in here. Uh, so, the trap he just set up will ignore west of the felled building. Okay. And... Says the boat houses, I know that. Near the canal you cross southeast of the village. Oh, right. That's all the way back. Well, you know what? I probably don't. Am I checking Morel's last? Hopefully, I can check it, like, you know, second last or something like that. Morel's still here? Probably not, right? Yeah, he's gone. Okay, so we'll give it a bit of time. Boat houses had one, apparently. There we go. Look around. Behind you, the ruins of the residential building rise over the reeds, shielding them from the wind. The uh, the reeds rustle confidently. Reach for the trap. The trap is also full of panicked locusts. No sign of any cryptozoological beast inside. Another empty trap. Lieutenant takes a note. More of habit than duty. Um, Let's keep going. The next one is a lucky one. Yep, the next one has a crab trapped in it. He raises his collar. It's windy. These are just crab traps, do you realize? Yeah, okay, well. Whatever. Um, near the canal in this one. Let's check the one that Morel set up. Right? This is the trap Mor Morel just set. Checking it over, he said um, is just a technicality, but let's look around. The reeds by the abandoned campsite hiss and shake in the lazily falling rain. The later it gets, the colder. Remnants of the camp can still be seen in the sand. The fire's gone out. You feel strange somehow. Nothing but locusts in this trap as well. Definitely no cryptozoological monstrosity. Empty as all of them. He pants. One more of these and we're done. His face is red from the cold sea air. He crouches to catch his breath. You getting tired? No, no, I'm fine. I didn't want to complain, it's just that. He's short-winded. The sentence ends there. Okay. I suppose we are running around everywhere. It makes sense that he might be a little winded eventually. Right. So now we can go check the last one. Oh, I also wanted to check this, um... This bit, because we didn't look at that before. What's up with this? You see a once bright mural towering above you. The signage has peeled off over the years, but you can still make out Feld Electrical R&D. A slogan used to intertwine with the loops a long time ago. Now only a shadow of peeled letters remains. It says, tomorrow is just a whisper away. Tomorrow is just a whisper away. It looks like tomorrow never came. He raises the collar of his bomber jacket. Let's turn away. Oh well, that was quick. Back down here. And we can now head all the way back. Oh, we've got the jacket for um, that guy. Um, Doom Sparrow, right? Oh, that's this is Doom Sparrow. Hello. Tequila Sunset. Um, well, I found your jacket. Ah, tequila. I knew you'd come through. That's fucking great, man. Uh, here's the jacket. Let me see. What? This isn't my jacket. My jacket was beautiful. This is fucking filthy. What am I supposed to do with this? Um, well, what do you expect? You left it outside for a week. I'm not taking a disgusting pile of hobo rags at me. Be in an irrecoverably decay orbit, but I still got standards. Either bring it back the way it was before, or find a dumpster to burn it in. Lieutenant inspects the jacket in your hands. You know, despite the guano, it looks like the jacket itself is stain resistant. It may just need a good scrubbing. Alright, be seeing you. So we need to find somewhere to clean the jacket? Yeah. Okay, and now I have a dirty jacket. Well, that's fine. Uh, I don't have anything to, that can clean it immediately, but, you know, at some point I might. 
Need to speak with her again now that we have, um, uh, now that we've been around and we know the good places. But I suspect that where we want to take her is we want to take her to the um, dance party at the nightclub. So we'll see. Now I'm expecting something interesting in here. Could be nothing, and that would be disappointing. Actually, you know what? That might be entirely what it is. It takes you a moment, but finally you spot the last of Morel's traps. This one's partially obscured by the reeds. Let's look around. The reeds have bent forlornly towards the sand. Some tufts have been crushed. The broken stalks seem like a rebuke. The sound of the city centre hums in the east. The contra, uh, the constant, distant song. Louder on this part of the coast. Nearer somehow. There's that cold again. Always the cold. Let's reach for the trap. The trap feels light and... Silent as you pick it up. Something is different here. Let's look closer. No locusts. No phasmid either, but still. It's empty! Your voice echoes on the coast, carried by a gust of cold wind. Let's look closer still. Lieutenant studies a trap with you. Well, the bait worked on something. This doesn't mean it was a reed monster, though. Unless you see one in the th in there, I just see an empty trap. The netting is a little unti untidy, messier than the others. Like someone or something picked up the trap and shook it before dropping it back down on the ground. Um, I get, I do get the feeling that someone or something may have messed with the trap. He purses his lips. Perhaps our cryptozoologists have competition in the form of an actual entomologist, or someone else is sabotaging them. I could present more theories, but then I would be taking this case. This on is a case which I'm not. Um. Well, what if it was the phasmid? What if it ate them and got out? Right. It does not look like he thinks you're right. Anyway, that's for the cryptozoologist to figure out now. He adds for clarity. Oh, we're not cryptozoologists, we're cops. Alright, alright. Fine. Whatever. Uh, so we have now inspected the traps and the last one was empty. Shocker. Right. Um, so we need to get back to Kim's car to call in the, the dead body. And it's called library. Um, then we want to go. We also don't have enough money to pay for our room tonight. Um, but then we need to go and speak to um, Titus. Then. Oh, we also need to handle our bottles. And we'll have to speak to Morel. And there's a lot of stuff to do, okay? Right. Uh, radio. Um. Connect me to Jamrock Public Library. Hold on, officer. I've got Central Jamrock Public Library on the line, and I've already introduced you to their library. To their librarian. Connecting the call in two, one. Yes, this is the Central Jamrock Public Library here. A male librarian answers the call. How oh, may I help you, officer? He sounds worried, yet ready to assist. This is how people get when the police call. I'm looking for any information that you can provide on a Billy Mejon, a reader. And Billy, Billy Mejon, you said? To give me a moment, I'll have to check our database. He puts down the receiver. Yes, hello, are you still there? You can hear him fiddle with the printout. I found Billy Mijon's home address. Is that all right? No phone number, unfortunately. They're too poor to have a phone line. Yes, the home address is fine. Here we go, uh, sir. Uh, Rue de Saint Ghislaine, 33B, apartment number 20. It's in Martinez, I believe. Capeside Apartments, it says. That's all. That's where the smoker on the balcony lives, isn't it? Do you have any other information on Billy Mijon? It says here they returned their last book just a few days ago, but I wasn't at work that day. Do you know somebody who was? Marie? He covers the phone with his hand and yells out to the room behind him. Marie, do you know about a reader named Billy Mejon? They returned a, a Diebold book the other day? 
you hear someone answer from afar. Maurice, what? A human woman yells, Yes, yes, so oh, okay if it was the police. He starts explaining something. Yes, it was my colleague Marie. The librarian is speaking to the phone again. She said that it was Billy's husband to return the book. He also asked for this new sci-fi release, Luz Radio City 87, but we don't have it yet. Good, you have a name now. Um, okay. So Billy Mayjean is a woman, not a man. How did your colleague know that it was her husband? Marie knows Billy. She's been working here longer than me. Sometimes her husband returns some books for her. Then goes out for a little drink later on the lookout. Do you know the husband's name? Sorry, no. Marie only knows him by sight. Can Marie describe how the husband looks like? Marie? A moment passes. She said it was an older man that she's pretty sure he had a drink or two the last time she saw him. What was he wearing? Oh, one second. Librarian turns away from the phone again, then relays the question. Sorry, Marie wasn't really paying any attention to that. Thank you. That's all from me. You have, I have no other questions. Happy we could help. Goodbye, officer. The librarian hangs up and the call gets redirected back to the station with a soft click. Anything else you need from me? No, I'm done for now. 57th, over and out. Her voice disappears into the void. Okay. Cool. Well, we've learned a little bit more there. Um... Let's think about where I want to go now. I do want to head into the Whirling, but I also want to go to Cape Side. Let's go to Cape Side Apartments first, uh, which is this way. But sit. Let's go to Cape Side Apartments first. Because I want to carry on with this murder thing, and I want to get that called in before we do anything else. Like, that one seems like calling it in would be good to do. Or sooner rather than later. Other stuff seems like it might wait. A very small amount of time. Ah, oh, yeah, you haven't been here, Kim, have you? Yeah, the, the, this place is um is terrible, just terrible. If I'm honest with you. Right. Um. So, first thing I want to do is straight in here. Now it said nobody could see us with this last time. Let's try this again. Um. Oh, okay. Kim, you have to admit, this Krasmazov bears a striking resemblance to me. Hold on a second. Is this why you broke in here to find out whether you're Krasmazov? I'm not saying that I am Krasmazov. I'm saying we look alike. Sure you are. Uh, just humor me for a moment. Don't you see the resemblance? Well, you... Both do share an affinity for sideburns, but it seems like old Kraz here didn't drink nearly as much as you. Uh, maybe this bus shows him before he started drinking. Very well. The lieutenant leans closer to the sculpture. Let's look for identifying features then. He puts a finger on a pale dot embellishing the bus cheekbone. Doesn't he have a birthmark right here? What about you? I can't tell, I can't see my face. Alright, but here's the big thing. Krasmazov looks Samaran and you don't? No, he doesn't. Yes, he does. Look at his eyes. Wasn't his mother a Samaran immigrant? I'm part Samaran myself. Lieutenant closes his eyes. Okay, you win. Be Krasmazov then, I don't care. He opens his eyes again, tilting his head in a quiet wonder. Why are you so hell-bent on proving your Krasmas of anyway? Um... Well... I'm not sure, it's just a feeling I have, but I trust my feelings. Alright, Kras. Lieutenant notes, if you say so. Okay, so we gain a thought, the suicide of Krasmazov. Cool. There's something you can't get out of your head. Krasmazov, the father of scientific communism, the premier of the Communist Party of Chest and Grad during the anti-centennial revolution, head of the 11-day government, sideburn-toting, bearded figurehead of the movement, shot himself in the mouth and died? One day in his cabinet, as things were collapsing around him, just gave up? That's not good propaganda, is it? Be a communist. Shoot yourself in the mouth. Something about this irks you. 
Okay. Um, what is the tent? I have a bust of Krasmazov in their bedroom. The white star, the photos on the wall. I think you're broken into the apartment of a young communard. He looks around before mumbling to himself. How fitting. Um, well, Krasmazov was a mass murderer. There's nothing cool about keeping his bust on your nightstand. He was definitely controversial. Lieutenant here seems to like him. He leans closer to inspect the photos of the revolutionaries on the wall. There aren't many communists around, not after the revolution. Some used to still keep their ideology going, it seems. Father Mazov, the hero of the working class. Whoever lives here definitely shares your enthusiasm. He leans closer to inspect the photos of the revolutionaries on the wall. There aren't many communists around, not after the revolution. Some youths still keep the ideology going, it seems. Alright. Cool. Uh, so we've done that. Uh, I believe we want to head... Out this way? Yeah, it's this way, I think. Because we're looking for room number 20. So let's go and see if we can find that. I like how it's like, police work can be tough. Take breaks. Yeah. Uh, 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 we've taken that to a new extreme. Is this 20? 20. A weathered brown door. The number reads 20. Something smells good. Soup à l'onguillon? Lieutenant motions you to go ahead and knock. This is the door. You already know it's the right door. This is going to be so hard. Hold on, Kim. We should discuss this before we move on. What should we expect? You're right. Let's talk this through. He looks at the apartment door and lowers his voice a bit. You hear light footsteps passing by the door and some folk music playing on the radio. We have our first preliminary identification, but in all likelihood the deceased is the husband of Billy Mejean. We need to confirm this as well as deliver the death notification to Billy herself. Now, delivering a death notification is never an easy task. There is a reason why it's often called the most stressful part of our job. This is why it's usually done in pairs. You got this, I'll be monitoring reactions. Ready to act if necessary. Um, do you have any advice on how to tell her he's dead? Just don't say that you know how they feel. You don't. Good advice. What if I don't want to do this? Yes, it's hard. He stares at the front door for a moment, his face still. But there is no easy way to handle this information. It just has to happen as soon as possible. Alright. I think I'm ready. Kim motions towards the door. Let's knock. Hello? Who is it? A voice calls out from the other side of the door. And someone turns down the radio. I'm going to look at the lieutenant first. He gives you a short, encouraging nod. Uh, is this Billy Mejon's home? This is the police. Please open the door. The police? A moment, please. Give us a moment. You hear some shuffling inside. Tidying up, nervously. A murder? It might be a murder. There's fear in her voice. Come in, the door is open. Okay. Odds that she killed her husband and made it look like an accident? Let's find out. Oh, I don't think... Well... I don't know. We are going to have to have a look around. Let's do that first. I like the there's new music for this. A pa empty pack of red Astra cigarettes hidden under the bed. Same brand of cigarettes you found in the trash next to the deceased. It was a murder. A chalk drawn that height chart for children's growth over the years. A textbook for high school, mathematics, trigonometry mostly. The clock is ticking away with odd cheerfulness. Its ticking makes you anxious, rings hollow in the room. Posters of contemporary pop stars adorn the walls. Alright, my one worry right now is that you haven't seen any children, yet that is quite clearly a child's bedroom. Windows covered in old newspaper clippings. 
Can't they afford curtains? Packages of humanitarian aid macaronis. Some leftovers kept warm on the stovetop. Smells like buckwheat and onions in here. Alright. Well, I'm just getting into a better standing spot. Hello. It's you from the book stand. Did you come to bring my cockatoo back? Oh no. She smiles nervously before the smile vanishes from her face. I don't think I introduced myself properly. I'm Billy. Would you like something to drink? Or tea, she lemonade? We're out of coffee. Lieutenant is taking off his foggy glasses and is busy cleaning them in his handkerchief for now. You're on your own here. Condensation from stepping inside. He must feel vulnerable without his glasses. Is this why he's letting you take the lead? Thanks, but I'm alright. Is this about Victor, my husband? Is he in some kind of trouble again? I can come pick him up from the station if that's what... She stops, her eyes trying to read the answers from your face. Something changes in her expression. No, this is something much worse. Is he in a hospital? How bad is it? I put some small talk before you break the news. We have high empathy because Kim is here. You live here with Victor, your husband, right? It's me, Victor, and the kids here. She nods. We have two daughters, Jenna and J Jolie. Um, and where is everybody? I don't see anyone home. The girls are staying at a friend's place tonight and Victor is out. Out where? He uh, has a problem with drinking. And so he disappears every now and then. He's probably in the pox drinking with his friends. I sent him to the library a few days ago, but I guess something came up. She smiles sourly. To your knowledge, did he make it to the library? No, I guess I'll have to find out when he decides to come back home. She looks at the front door. It shouldn't be long from now. He's never gone for more than a few days. What was the name of the library? Oh, it's in Jamrock, the, uh, at Merrow Street. I don't know the official name. Uh, Central Jamrock Public Library? Yes, yeah, I, th I think yes. The, that's the one on Merrow. It is. Um, what was he supposed to be doing in the library? Just to return a book of mine, why? He looks at you quizzically. Why all these questions, detective? Did he... Do something? Break something? It's fool's hope. What was the name of the book? I think it was Thibault. It's the uh, glinting curve. She tucks a strand of her hair behind her ear. It was pretty good. Remember what he was wearing when you last saw him? His old leather jacket. Can you describe it? Um, it's just your average brown leather jacket. He bought it as a teenager, so... What about the inner lining? Yes, she stops. The lining is hand sewn and it's blue. I tried to make the thing more waterproof since he's running around with it in the middle of winter. There's something I have to... Well, wait, do we have anything else? There's something I have to tell you. She folds her hands across her chest. Not yet. So notice you were cooking something. People gotta eat. She rubs her hands together anxiously. What's this about? Why are you suddenly asking me about my cooking? So how have you been? How have I been? She shakes her head. You're not there to discuss me. What's this about, officer? Can't write a scene without knowing the actors. Get m Ask more. Be comfortable around her. Too much small talk and made her anxious. Let's tell her about the dead body. Don't fail this one. <gasps> That's good. You've done this before. Just keep your focus. God. Do I just say he's dead like that? Yes, that's the most important thing. Use that word. No euphemisms. This is what you came here for. Ma'am, I'm very sorry to say, but your husband, your husband, Victor Mejon, was found dead on the Martinez board boardwalk. He blinks. What did you say? Your husband, Victor Mejon, is dead. I'm very sorry for your loss, ma'am. Oh. She touches her neck, eyes pale like pearls in seawater. Oh, he says again. But he was just... 
She looks at the kitchen table, where two cigarette butts are still in the tray. But he was just here. Alive. We understand this comes as a huge shock. I want you to know that me and my partner, he points at you, are here for you if you have any questions. Take your time, ma'am. What happened to him? She turns to you, her neck and cheeks covered with red blotches. Her double chin is shaking. It's still early to say, but at first glance it seems like he slipped and hit his head. Oh, was he drunk? Alcohol may have played a role, yes. I see. She withdraws, trying to picture the scene. And you just found him there, lying in the gold. How long had he been there? If you say two days, maybe, it'll be etched in her mind forever. It couldn't have been long. She blinks, eyes welling up with tears, as her hands start searching for something from the pockets of her dress. Here, Kim takes out his handkerchief and offers it to the woman. She nods and slowly wipes away her tears. Is there anyone we could call for you? A friend, a family member, someone who could be here for you. No, no, she breathes in. I just need to tell my girls. The air gets sucked out of her lungs suddenly. God, should I call them? Should I tell them to come home? No, a day. Um, no, take a day to recover. You'll be better prepared when they come home tomorrow. Good, that's probably the right thing. Thank you. She nods, but with a wretched expression. Just tell me, what do I need to do next? Where is he? Can I see him? We've taken him to the city morgue. The local coroner will be contacting you shortly to arrange for the funeral. Here's his number in case you want to contact him earlier. A very good call. He hands her a leaflet with the morgue's contact information. Is there anything else the RCM could do for you? No, I'll uh, call you if something comes up, I'm still... She rubs her face, runs her fingers over her cheeks that have become numb. Thank you. She looks down. Thank you for telling me, I'll call if... She runs out of breath. Again, I'm very sorry, ma'am. Lieutenant nods at the woman, then looks back at you, his voice lowered. We should uh, step outside and talk. I'm going to set the library card by her and leave the room. Hey, Kim. You did well. The lieutenant says, as soon as you've left the apartment, the balcony feels cold and quiet with a stunning view over the district. I could have done more. You did enough. He pauses, rubbing his hands together to generate some heat. Can't save the whole world, you know. Can't bring the dead back. What now? I'll call the station when we're finished with the day and let them know the name of the deceased. What about Billy and her kids? They'll manage. That's it? That's it. We should get back to our case now. Our duty here is done. Right, this is close then. Let's go. Okay, well there is one thing I need to check. Just to fully end the case. Is do we call it in? Or... Is that it? Because if that's it, that is just a... Uh, that is a uh, gut-wrenching bit there, if that is all that was there. It was just we found somebody, he had too much alcohol, there's no greater story to it. He just, like, got his foot stuck in a boardwalk and died. That's as far as the story goes for him. There's, there's no secret conspiracy. There's no, well, maybe something else happened. That's it. Just fell over and died. Okay, well. Let's uh, pull out the radio. 
Nope, there's no one else to talk with. I missed my opportunity to call it in. I guess if we called it in, we wouldn't have been able to go to the house. Okay, then. That one is done. Is there anything else to it? Nope, it's completed. Okay. Well, I think I'm going to end the episode there. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.